Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today we are going to be doing Gems of War, Tower of Doom. It's 11th week, day one of the Yellow Doom, and we finally got the final one of the Doom Skull creating weapons. So we'll be able to mess around with that if we want. However, the earlier end of Delves, we're probably just going to be able to just run through some uh, divine damage and just rush them up that way. And uh, pretty much just go from there. Uh, of course, video for the thingy isn't up yet. We'll have that done uh, very soon after the stream. But for now, let's go build ourselves a uh, yellow divine team and go tear through the uh, event. Uh, also, we got four legends, none of which would be helpful to us right now. Though I don't even need a single legend. I'm pretty sure we've maxed out every legend. I think there were a few that I was deliberately not maxing just because it's cheaper on resources to not. But I'm uh, pretty sure they've been upgraded by now. Oh no, two minutes left on the pet. It didn't even give me a notification for it. What? Oh well. We're just going to ignore it at this point. If only two minutes left, that's not enough time. If it was like five minutes, we could absolutely rush through it. But two minutes is... There's no way you can finish the entirety of pet battles in two minutes. You'd have to win like one every 15 seconds. The loading screens almost take that long. Even if you could instantly win like how uh, um, Sunbird does with Firebomb and everything. Like Explore, you could barely even get it done that quick. It's because... Um, yeah, that's, the loading screens are almost that long. But anyways, uh, I didn't buy the packs yet, so let me go do that right now. Uh, of course, we're just buying up to the weapon. I'm not going any further than that. You could, uh, I, I generally wouldn't really advise going much further than that. Uh, of course, you could theoretically go up to the emoji and everything. But, uh, I don't know, there just really isn't much of a need to. Um, unless you just really want that portrait right now or the emojis right now. I don't think we got anything too good. It's a bunch of uh, bugs of some kind. Bug set 2. When did bug set 1 come? There's no way we had a bug set 1 already. Did we already have a bug set? I'm pretty sure we have not had a bug set before. Uh, where is bug set 1? They just made bug set 2 without making bug set 1. Did they forget to release bug set 1? Or is it on a faction and they made that the bug set 1? There's no bug set. That's weird. Oh, I see. Yes, there is. They called the spider set the bug set. Aha! Interesting. Yeah, nothing too interesting in there. Uh, anyways, also, I didn't even buy these yet. Well, I guess it's because there's nothing useful under them. I will eventually go get them. They're just a waste of gems at the moment. But then again, <laughs> I think we have enough gems. <laughs> I think we have enough. But anyways, let's go do Tower of Doom. Got a bunch of Tower of Doom to do. And we'll do it with the... Uh, actually, first things first. To figure out what our team is going to be and just copy paste it over would be the easiest way of doing that initially so first things first is go all the way double here we don't need this actually that's almost the team i need right now how funny um let's see do we actually want to go quill and divinia i think that's too that's too much um that takes too long to get rolling so we're gonna go with uh get that in there do we need the Vinya for lower level range? Probably not. We're not running an HP boosting troop. Definitely keeping the Infernus. Oh yeah, let me make sure I have a yellow restriction on. Actually, before I do, um, I need Divine Protector. Oh yeah, duh, it just automatically moves there. Okay, clear that out. Yellow. What do we have for yellow options? Ideally, yellow Divine options. Where's Divine? Uh, Divine, 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 Divine. What options do we have right now? Generally, one of the better ways to go for lower level range. Of course, there's Divine Ishbala plus Quillen combo. I don't think I want to run that for earlier battles, though. Uh, but there is an option for it. Queen Aurora is not bad. Oh, yeah, Ubastep. <laughs> That's a classic team right there. Did we just run with that? That seems a bit overkill. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, another Divine that fits there other than that. Yeah, it's basically just Quillen or... Um, or Ubistet, or uh, Queen Aurora. Was there like our is fine? We're gonna roll it like this. Have it um, Divine Ishbala fully blocked, and just have it Divine into uh, Infernus, Ishbel, and all that. And for this, we could just go uh, all in Divine and go with Priest class. Uh, priest, get that equipped. Make sure all of our perks are set correctly. Uh, extra life, sure, why not? Uh, or, I mean, random stats effect, that's better. Get the cleanse. Wait, we're running him in first slot, though. We could run him with 18 extra durability. Um, but we'd probably just switch to an actual barrier class before we would need that. Light storm, extra magic, extra yellow, and extra HP for divines. Okay, it's all set correctly. Uh, banner. 
I guess we just go all in yellow. I kind of want a plus one, plus one for the protector. But it's starting with 40% instead of 50%, so it doesn't matter as much. Anyways, let's get into Tower of Doom. Oh, I need to go copy that team. <laughs> uh, hold up. Uh, let me rename this to... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where is the rename button? There it is. Uh, Yellow Divine. Or at least the low level range. Uh, copy that team. And let's go use this. To the Guild Wars, or to the Tower of Doom, I mean. Uh, okay, so number that we need. Where's our guild chat? Does anyone have one pasted down here? No, we did not. Uh, so it's all the way up here. Room number five. Let's go get that first. And we can tear it apart with this team. And since we have a paste function now, this copy pasting is such a nice feature. By far the best feature they've added all year. Ah, there we go. I don't think we need to change anything. Nope. Should be good. Anyways, hello everyone! Hello William! Hello Michael! Hello Polly! Hello Tony B! Hello Tyranny! Hello Dizen! Hello Captain! Hello Drock! Uh, hello Cookie! Hello... Who did I just skip? Uh, let's see. Hello uh, Zone! Uh, hello Isabel! Hello Birdleaf! Hello Dizen! Hello Radio! Hello Matt! Hello Haiti! Uh, da, 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 da. Hello, Marcelo. Uh, da, 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 da. Hello, Jurok. Uh, hello, Haley, and hello, everyone else. Welcome. And hello, Bruno. And hello, Youth Guy. Okay, let's go move that down and get our damage. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't have a controller plugged in right now. Let me go get that so we can quick cast everything. You should die in almost one shot, though. Or one shot. That works, too. Uh, one second. Uh, where's the cord for it? It's down there. Hiding from me. There we go. Yep, we got a pet too. Lucky pet. Already have it maxed, but oh well. There we go. Uh, wrong controller. Let me go move this one. Okay, so right off the bat, get that to full. Throw that immediately. Already won. Oh, almost already won. Okay, now we already won. <laughs> one cast in Furnace. Been a while since I used Infernus, but low level range and same level range is one of the main things it's used for. 2-2. Two, two. I hope they've been scouting out all the rooms. That's a lot of rooms that have no extra thing on them. They yeah, definitely make sure to scout out all the rooms, particularly for the lower range. Sometimes people don't do it for the higher range, but for the lower range you definitely need to be scouting out every single room. I assume my guild is and they just happen to have just not had anything on the floor. But uh, do make sure you do them all. It should be pretty quick for the first uh, 10 floors or so. Uh, and then we need to switch into an actual real team. This is just for quick killing the uh, earlier ones. And so far we've one cast killed every single one, though it's going to stop soon. Because their stats are starting to get high enough that that will not one-shot anymore. But it still kills them quickly. There we go. Okay, uh, next floor. What do we have? We have a... just a four. And then we start getting other rooms. Also, I will be skipping all of the hay scrolls. They're still nice to mention for your guild, but, um... I don't know, if you're buying up to pack four, you really do not need any hay scrolls. I could see going for them if you bought zero packs. Or if you bought, like, lower than four. But, uh, if you bought all the way up to four, you really won't need it if you're just trying to reach the 25 minimum. But well, I guess if you wanted extra stats for some battles, you could. Is there any way to get Divine Protector now? Nowadays, yes. They did make it so all old event weapons are obtainable from Soulforge eventually. Though you won't be able to get it until um, a while. There's a specific kingdom that's associated to. And until that kingdom has an event, you will not be able to get the uh, Divine Protector. The specific event is... Uh, which one is it? Uh, it, the weapon is from White Helm, so next White Helm event, you'd be able to get it. I have no clue off the top of my head when that is, but I can go check real quick. Uh, let's see... I'm looking for troops. When is the next White Helm event? And that's when you can get Divine Protector. Though you don't need Divine Protector for that, you could run Mountain Crusher there and still be okay. Uh, especially if you're running it with Titan instead. Uh, we do not have a White Helm event coming anytime soon. Nope, there is no White Helm event within Visible Sights, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, no way home, unfortunately. So you won't be able to get this weapon for a while if you don't currently have it. 
It will eventually be reobtainable, though. Most of the old event weapons are. All of the more relevant ones actually are. The only ones that aren't are the excessively old weapons, but every single one of the excessively old weapons are not meta. There's not a single excessively old weapon that is. But yeah, Mountain Crusher should be perfectly fine for subbing in there. It's not exactly the same, but if you're using the, if you're switching to Divine Ishbala Quillen combo, it's going to be perfectly fine for when you switch into that. It's also cheaper since it doesn't use any um, Mythics if you go that combo. I will probably switch into that later on, just because it's a great skull spam option. But uh, for the earlier battles, it's just not worth it for how long it takes to get going. But once it does get going, it normally wins automatically. Okay, no good drops, so let's go poke him. Uh, I'm going to poke that just so he doesn't double brown for them. Because those things need 13 plus brown on the board in order to do their higher, uh, or to do their devour chance. Uh, do we have any alignment? Yes, we do. Skull spam it is. Uh, oh, never mind. We got guard. We can just kill it with guard. Guard does have a pretty decent amount of damage, uh, at least for this level range. He's doing about, I want to say 70? He's probably doing around 70 damage to everything or so. So that's definitely going to be helpful for us, that's for sure. Also, we'll have a redeem code once we hit, uh, I guess, floor 10. Because that's about when we're going to need to switch into a different team anyways. We'll hand out a code then. And of course, as I mentioned, the event video will be up uh, probably a few hours after the stream. Depends how long YouTube wants it to actually take to upload. It's the only thing that a bad connection really affects, for the most part, is how long that thing takes to upload. It takes forever sometimes. Depending on how cooperative my connection wants to be. And I can't have it upload while I'm doing a stream, otherwise the stream will be uh, excessively laggy. Uh, okay, we got a Lucky. We definitely want to take those. It's one of the best rooms there is. A three. And then we take the four. Uh, where is it? This one right over here. And then the top right. Hello, Jesse! Hello, uh, King Rich. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you've been experimenting uh, or experiencing... Wait. I, you've been experiencing trouble. Wait. I've been experiencing eye trouble. I wanted to know. Oh, there was no period. Uh, I was wondering. <laughs> that sentence really threw me off from the lack of period. I wanted to know if anyone else was having the same problem with the uh, the pet rescue notifications. Uh, the biggest thing with pet notifications is they do not give you the notification unless you actually do a battle. Or if you take your tribute. And if you haven't done either of those two things during that time, it will often not give you the notification for it. Unless you specifically do one of those two things. Which means if you just have the game, like, idle... The reason they don't is because it would require, um... It would probably lag the game if they had to check for it constantly. Because the way that they have to check is they only have it so it checks your online thing after a instance where you need to use online. So if you just have the game idling, it won't, but if you have to, like, gain, if you gain any resource, if you take your tribute, if you do basically anything that updates the, um, updates the game from an online perspective, it will go and uh, give you the notification. It's why it won't do it while you're in a battle. It also won't do it while you're just idling on a screen. It needs some kind of action that will check for the online aspect of it, and um, then it will give you the update for it. It's why Tribute does it, because it needs to check for it. It's also why uh, any battle will do it, because battles always, at the end of a battle, it uh, updates all your resources and everything, and it needs checks connection for that. It's why whenever you um, lose connection, you actually can play out the entirety of the battle. However, you don't lose connection until the actual end of the battle, because that's when it goes and checks for connectivity. And the same thing ha happens with pets, just so they don't have to have a check everywhere. They just have it at a check of online instances. If you're just doing things that don't require it, then it's not ever going to give it a notification. That's, I believe, the biggest issue that it has. And they can't make it so it constantly checks, otherwise that lags or does something weird to the game. I'm not sure exactly, but <laughs> I know it uh, would make... Um, it'd be more intense on the game having to have a constant check that's going all the time. Which is why they don't have it like that, most likely. Uh, what do we take here? We need... What do we even have for drop? Let's go for this and throw it at the Doom. 
barely even been noticing the dooms because they keep dying so quickly. Gosh, that should be enough to wipe. Yeah. Guard's Avatar was at one point like my favorite mythic. He was actually at one point the strongest mythic too. These days, not really so much. Uh, I think I put him as like D tier on the uh, tier list. Uh, there are some instances where he is decent. It's just very, very rare. Uh, the biggest thing with him is he just has a really high liability. There are a lot of troops that have a tier armor mechanic in Gems of War. And uh, yeah, he's obviously really bad against that mechanic. As well as just taking damage in general. Which leaves him as a high liability in many battles. His damage output's pretty decent, especially if you armor buff him. And he's dead. Okay, on to the next one. What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Uh, duh, 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 duh. We have... That was it. We move on. That was the tier 3 room. Only thing we needed on this floor. Hello, James! Welcome! And hello, Corn. if I didn't already say hi. Yeah, the Nintendo Switch version doesn't have cross-platform. None of the consoles do. Yeah, if, if Nintendo Switch had cross-platform, I'd probably be playing on Switch right now, rather than on PC. Actually, yeah, at this current moment in time, I have moved all my gaming onto Switch now instead of PV, uh, instead of PC. Mainly because it's just a lot more convenient that way. Also, pretty much every indie game has been being released on Nintendo anyways. Even indie games that are like exclusive to Nintendo as well. The most recent one being uh, Cadence of Hyrule. But yeah, it's actually easier for me to stream stuff too if it was actually on um, Switch. Because I could have the Switch running the game and just having my PC run everything I need for the stream. Because it's slightly laggier on my end occasionally when... Um, or my connection doesn't hold up as well. Because the computer's trying to do everything rather than splitting it up between different, you know, things. Have the console run the game while um, this the PC just does everything for the stream. Would be easiest. But unfortunately can't do that until they eventually get cross-platform if that ever even becomes a thing. Okay, I was gonna go for the bird. Need his sigils. Actually, I technically don't need his sigils, but I definitely want them. If nothing else, we could use them for extra bonuses later on in the delves. Even if we don't necessarily need them for uh, completion. We can use it just to speed up our stats. Just so it doesn't take as long to get through them later on. With that 50% extra bonus. We could also theoretically do that to make this team last longer if we wanted to. As far as how far it could go. Also, we're getting a lot of just move on rooms. Which isn't too big a deal. Um, because we're probably going to easily get the event done regardless of if there's a lot of them or not. But still, that means we're going to have an overall less doom count. But I guess that really only matters for the leaderboard, doesn't it? And I guess theoretically having more powers would also help speed things around. If a lot of powers are found and your guild's going to be gaining a lot of extra stats, and those extra stats would help speed things up. It would also lower the chance of losing. However, I found um, Tower of Doom has pretty decent win rate. Like, even if you're losing a bunch, you could just use Titan. And Titan's immune to most rooms unless it has Skull Spam. Like, Barrier Titan. You're not going to have much of an issue. And even if that's not tanky enough, you could just go Sentinel and build a Sentinel team with your frontline tank. One nice thing about Tower of Doom and Delves is you can use any color weapon. Unlike Guild Wars, where you do get penalized if you use a uh, different colored weapon. Uh, even though you're still allowed to. Um, in Tower of Doom and um, Delves, there is no penalty to using a different color weapon. And you're allowed to, so you might as well just use a different color weapon. Uh, very rarely would you actually run the same color for Doom. And same as uh, Delves. There's just no point in doing so. When you can just use a more advantageous uh, weapon instead. Oh, I guess there isn't. There is one point. You do still gain a bonus from having four unique yellows. So it's a pretty small bonus, or four unique of any color. And I believe yellow is HP. It's either HP or armor. Can't remember. Actually, it might be armor. I actually completely forgot off the top of my head. But uh, it's not really that big a difference. I believe even with a maxed out pet, it's only like 16, if even that. 16 extra stats isn't really going to do much, especially once we get later on into the dose. Also, why did I do that? I should have just done guard. 
Luckily that hit the right targets. That could have hit in a way that wouldn't have killed, unfortunately. Okay, uh, what do we have here? Eight? Yeah, just, why we have so many places that only have one room? I gotta do this. Oh, at least it's getting through it quickly. We're actually almost already at floor 10. And at the end of floor 10, we'll go hand out the code. And about that point, we need to probably switch this team to something else, because it probably is uh, not going to work anymore. Or at least be a lot less effective. Because their stats are already starting to get similar to ours, and soon it's going to pass ours. And once it passes ours too much, it's not going to be worth using this team anymore. Oh, what does all that info mean? Yeah, I keep checking every single time. This basically, um, I went over in a lot of the older Tower of Doom videos. For any of you that might be newer, you might have no clue what this means. I should probably explain it. Uh, <laughs> I should probably explain it on the Monday video too again, maybe, since it's been almost a year of Tower of Doom. One more Tower of Doom event, and it'll be a whole year of Tower of Doom. But uh, basically what this is, is it's telling us what room we need to do. We basically have it set up to, so the first number is the floor. The in-between thing is just to divide it, uh, or, you know, just so it separates it some. And the next number is the floors that we have to do. Over here, we have the uh, room order. Um, it does, technically doesn't matter what order you specifically do them in. We just separate it with a different icon. And just to kind of show which progression order it goes in. But um, just so people don't accidentally forget to... Uh, normally, you put the unlock last, just because you don't want them to um, accidentally take the unlock and then move on. If there was something else that was important. But uh, yeah, basically this first number is the floor. The thing is just to divide it. Or divide it up just so it's separated. And not two numbers next to each other. And then the next one is uh, the actual room that you do. So in this case it's room 5. The, tier, the one that says 5 on it. The one that has 2 on it. The one that has 4. So on and so forth. Uh, the rest of these. Uh, the one that has the unlock always goes last. We just have it in that order. And uh, the rest of these just are denoted with various letters. Uh, what you specifically do for these just depends on your guild as far as what you want to use. But we have lowercase a for, a for h for haste, which is a one extra sigil, which is basically how much you spend on the room. However, you could get a vow raven. These are generally worth skipping. However, if you want to get maximum amount of sigils, you do do, do them. Uh, L's we have marked for lucky, so any of these are lucky room, which give two doom kills, which are one of the best rooms that you can get. Um, a P is power, so you gain one plus one to all of the. Uh, boons that we have it doesn't increase the actual stat; it just does plus one to it So f for example if we have a plus five attack, it will not raise it to plus six It'll raise it to like four out of seven or five out of seven It just adds plus one to the number at the bottom not to the top uh, for your little bonuses that you have for it uh, The F is just to, to tell us fireball um, And I believe that was all of them that we have here There's also a capital H which we use for heroism, which is why we have a lowercase h for haste but uh, this basically just tells us what rooms we need to do. So like right here we're on floor 9, so we know that we need to go do number 5. And that's basically what that is for. All those little random numbers and things. I'm not sure if other guilds do it differently, but that's how I have mentioned to do it. And I know personally that's how my guild ends up doing it. I'm pretty sure other guilds do something similar, maybe not the exact same thing. But it works. And generally, you should be doing that, regardless of how casual or hardcore your guild is. You basically have a few people designated to help with scouting, and it helps out everyone else. And even if you don't have people designated for scouting, you should still be reporting out what every single room is. Or at least the more relevant rooms. You don't need to... The rooms that you don't need to report on are all the ones that just give plus one to a various stat. And I believe that's it, actually. I'm trying to think of what other rooms aren't worth reporting on. But I believe it's just the ones that have plus one into a stat of some kind. Uh, the one that gives plus one to all is the power. But uh, all the other ones you don't really need to report on. Because power is just so much better than it. And you're kind of wasting sigils if you just go and keep doing them. Because um, if you keep doing them, they're going to have diminishing returns. So for example, if you report back, like let's say a magic, that might be useful. However, the problem with reporting back a magic is uh, it's not necessarily going to actually increase your magic every single one you take. It takes multiple to be able to get it. So if you end up getting a magic room, for example, that's only going to bring it to 6 out of 8. And same as a power, that's going to bring it to 2 out of 10, 5 out of 10, uh, 7 out of 9, and a 6 out of 8. It's not actually going to increase the top number. Uh, powers are basically like 4 of them simultaneously. 
Uh, all the other ones are only plus one. So you generally do not want to go for a plus one HP armor attack or magic because a power is four times as good as that. So you just basically only take the power and you'll get plenty amount of powers that uh, just taking powers would be enough stats on their own. So you don't really need to worry about um, taking all the other smaller stats. It's just waste sigils. And every room, unlike... Um, unlike... Um, uh, delves, you do need to make sure you don't do every room. Uh, you do when you're scouting, but you don't want to if you're not scouting. And the main reason for that is every single battle you do does use one sigil. So if you're wasting one sigil every single time, you are going to be burning through a lot of sigils, to say the least. So you do want to be careful with that. Normally you only need like two to three sigils per floor once it's scouted. Otherwise you would need like four to five. Yeah, you should always open up all the beginning floors. You should open up all the floors up to about 25. Everything beyond that you don't necessarily need to open up. But um, you should try getting every single floor up to 25 fully scouted. Including 25 itself. Because that's as far as most people go, because there's no actual re reward beyond 25. At least on a personal level. Of course, there's leaderboard. But as far as the main loot that you get from the game mode, uh, you only get it up to the point of completing up to 25's completion. So up to 26, basically. Okay, floor 10. And once we finish out this, we'll hand out the code. And we got a power and then the other room. So we'll take the uh, power over here. Uh, you don't have Guard's Avatar. What's a good sub for him? Uh, Ubistet, uh, Queen Yezebel, uh, Quillen. We're actually going to be probably switching this into a Quillen team right after this battle, actually. After we hand out the code. Or after, after we finish out this floor. We'll hand out the code and then probably switch our team. Because this team is starting to get slightly less effective. It's still working, so maybe we'll use it a little bit longer. But uh, we are going to need to change this team soon into something better. But then again, <laughs> seems to be doing pretty good right now. Based on that, uh, so we had four and two, right? Let me just double check. What was this ten? Uh, yeah, two and four. Let me go take four. And that should be the move on scroll, and then we go right into the final room. What's worth making in Soulforge? Uh, oh yeah, I didn't bother checking Soulforge yet. Let me go and mention that real quick. I'll be covering the video soon too, of course. But let me go and just mention it on stream, since we now can see it. Okay, we'll go get that down. I don't know why I hit him. That was a really weird target to go for, but it's fine. Get that in there, and then we can just throw in a furnace. And anything else? I guess we could try dealing with the Vinish Bala. At least get a bunch of manas. And he's dead. There we go. Okay, next order of business. Let's go and get um, the uh, final room here. Don't need to change anything else, right? Yeah, there's no other rooms, right? Double check before we do it, because we won't be able to go and do them again. If uh, we do accidentally skip past them. Okay, it's fine. So let's go and uh, do this final room here. Hand out the code and then switch our team. Oh yeah, I was going to go check Soulforge. I knew there was something I was about to go do too. I'll go do that uh, as soon as we finish this battle and hand out code. Go check Soulforge. Also, I forget if there's any good weapons. We'll need to check that too. Obviously, I already have them all, but just to mention them. Probably just collection weapons. Alright, this is starting to get slightly slower. I can start seeing on this battle now. It's still really easily winning, though. Oh, why did I do that instead of Divine? Uh, I'll throw it on there. And now we're in Furnace. That should be enough damage. Yeah, it is. It wouldn't normally, but uh, this game mode has slightly higher magic. I think we have like 8 higher magic right now or something. Somewhere around there. There we go. Okay. So, let's go hand out a code and let's go check Soulforge. Let me hand out code first. Uh, let's see. Where is the code I'm looking for? I believe it is this one right here. Also, I need to ask Salty for more codes soon. We only have about uh, the rest of this week's worth of codes. And then I'm out of codes. But uh, this one should work. Paste that there. Copy, copy. And there you guys go, there's the redeem code used on gemsaward.com beneath the game code section. Your invite code can be found underneath your settings menu, whatever your game says there. 
Redeem code is right over there in chat. Just copy and paste it from chat. Uh, it's used on the same location as always, gemsaware.com for the game code section, or simply click that link. Both go to the same place. And um, gives the same reward as always. Two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Enjoy, everyone. And it's only usable on PC Mobile. Every other version does not work. Uh, or all the console versions don't work. Okay, next order of business. Soul Forge. Let me go check that real quick. Oh, also, I need to go do that pet. Let me go do that right now, actually, before I forget. Uh, we'll do that next. Uh, also, some free XP for our classes. But anyways, what am I looking for? Not that. Uh, troops. Uh, Tanya, useless. Suna, useless. Wardbreaker, decent. Um, Wardbreaker could be an okay option. The main thing with Wardbreaker is... Um, submerge hard counters him. Uh, biggest benefit is he has... Um, a static explosion that's really high. He's basically like a Gorgotha that can't be webbed, which in some situations is good. His biggest drawback is he's bad against Submerge, and he has the second highest mana cost in the game at 30. Um, but he's an okay troop. Generally, you go in Furnace instead. There are some instances where Wordbreaker is better, but more often than not, in Furnace is going to be way better value for you than a Wordbreaker. If you had to choose between one or the other, I would definitely say in Furnace, hands down. Uh, oh, Catcher's the Bull. That is definitely something to consider worth it. Um, Catcher's the Bull is really good in Tower of Doom. Unfortunately, it's obviously we can't use it in t yellow Tower of Doom. It's uh, red, green, and brown. But it's really good for low to mid-level... Actually, it's good for all of Tower of Doom. If you have Yasmin's Pride, it's good for the entirety of, uh, uh, of Doom. And even if you don't, there are some other alternatives to feed him either attack, armor, HP. As long as you feed him a lot of either of those three things, he's going to be good to go. Um, even if you just have an Earth Fury or really anything. Anything that you have that can upscale feed either of those three stats to him, he's going to be perfectly fine. And then he just goes, gets two gigantic hits, and just k kills them all out. Um, but yeah, he's really good for Tower of Doom. He's good for low-level Delves. He's sometimes even mid-level Delves. And uh, he's an okay PvP option. He's generally not used as much in PvP or Guild Wars. Just because, similar to Guard's Avatar, he does have a bit of a stat liability. Uh, but he works pretty good at upscaling. Uh, with the Yasmin's Pride and stuff, so he's definitely a fun option to have. Uh, can normally win out battles in two hits. You cast him on second slot, you cast him on fourth slot, and then you won. Uh, that does cost quite a bit of mana. However, Shaman Hero Class does start with him with 50% mana. Uh, and if you are doing it in a game mode that has enchant off of scrolls, he actually gets to start with only needing 9 mana to get the full, which is extremely good for a Mythic. Uh, he actually has one of the quickest casts of any high damage Mythic. Which is one of the other reasons, since he has a 22 mana cost that can ha have a half mana start. Whereas quite a few other mythics do not have uh, that low of a mana cost, nor uh, half mana start capability. Uh, because this is too lower than most other mythics. Most mythics have a mana cost around 24, but his is uh, 22. Biggest thing he lacks is any board control, but he's a pretty nice option to have. Definitely not the first thing you would craft, but uh, probably within the top 10 of things that you would get around to crafting. A uh, really good thing to have around. It's also needed for a kingdom upgrade. But, oh yeah, what was the weapons? I want to also check weapons. Then we need to go do that pet. Uh, weapons, weapons. Uh, obviously, Doomed Axe. Uh, Crystal Axe. I believe this came out pretty recently. But, um, yeah, if you want to go get that. Uh, that one's an okay weapon. It's not anything too over the top. And there's two other weapons that seem to be available. Stone Staff. This is completely useless. You would only use it for collection purposes if you wanted it. And the other one is Blade of Sands. As far as Blade of Sands, this was also useless. However, again, for collection purposes, you might want to go and... Uh, get your uh, hand on it but uh, the most relevant one is just the um, the doomed axe for sure uh, though you can just buy it through the event I, I would honestly advise spending 500 gems on it instead however if you really wanted to you can buy it for 800 diamonds 50,000 souls 2,000 of uh, the yellow thing and eight um, eight celestials but honestly I would just spend 500 gems on it. it's probably the better way to go but uh, if you don't want to go that far into the event, you can just do that instead and just get it from uh, Soul Forge. I do advise if you're going to go with any weapon to try to go with that weapon. Because that Doom weapon, is good. even though it's the most expensive, it's going to be the most viable. Speaking of that, let me actually go upgrade that some. And probably go use it in Tower of Doom. But before we do, I need to go... Uh, right? Yeah, it is fine to get it max. It doesn't have anything that really backfires from what I could tell. So we'll go get it all the way there. And now we need another six floors until we can go and max it out. And we might actually be able to do that on stream right now. Go get it maxed out and uh, mess around with a maxed out Doom Dax. Which will kind of be funny because then we'll have a maxed out Doom Dax that we could show for the video then. For the Monday video. Because I haven't recorded it yet. So uh, that's kind of funny. So yeah, we definitely need to go keep doing Tower of Doom until we reach that point. But before we do... I need to go do this pet. Uh, before the time expires. Oh, we don't have key set up right now. Oh, well, I'm just going to run it with Truffle, I guess. I'm not going to bother switching it out. 
Truffle's a little bit slow of a start, but it's fine. You normally only use this for the later ones. If you're going to bother using it for pets. It's not as good for pets. It's actually towards the slower side, but it's a job done. Truffle's only really good for, like, really high stats. Because of how much infinite damage he has. For stuff like this, he's a bit slow because he takes so long just to get that one cast. 17 mana to feed him with, with no half mana start. Well, he does have elemental half mana start, but uh, there's not any room for it on this team. Unfortunately. I guess theoretically we could take out Hero. So I guess there is technically room for it, but then we're not gaining class XP. We also then don't have Green Storm or Dispel at that point either. Which is one of the main reasons for Hero. We'd also like to cleanse, but for this game mode, or for what we're doing right now, it wouldn't matter if we had cleanse or not. We're not going to use that weapon a single time. Do you think the devs release a hero weapon that destroys enemies' armor and converts into split magic for the whole team? Like Earth's Fury? Um, I'm not sure if they'll ever do it. I know there's currently a weapon that somewhat does that. There's Trickster Shot. I'm not sure if they would do it just because they would need to have a really low boost ratio for it. It'd have to be like a 1 in 9 or a 1 in 10 boost ratio if they were to do something like that. So, for example, if they had 100 armor at a 1 in 10, it would only give 10 magic to all allies. And the reason I say that is because Trickster Shot's at a 1 in 3. So every 3 armor they have converts to 1 magic. It's a lot lower rate than that of Earth's Fury and uh, Mang. Because Mang gets 1 to 1. And Earth's Fury, I believe, also has a 1 to 3. However, it distributes it to everything rather than just the 1. But yeah, if they were to do that, it would have a really low boost ratio, and they might make it too low that's not even viable. If they make it 1 in 15, then it definitely won't be viable. Uh, 1 in 10 is the lowest they could make it that would still be viable, I feel like. And he should be dead. Then we just need the other half of them, and then we can head back to Tower of Doom. And I don't actually need this pet, but I do need his food. We need so much more pet food. Too bad I'm going to have to convert this pet into food. Oh no, he silenced my thing. We might actually need that uh, cleanse after all. Please get unsilenced. Nope. Oh wait, never mind. Yes, he did. Okay, we're fine. Let's do that, and now we have infinite. Okay, he's dead. That does 1,000, or that does, uh, however much damage we need it to do, is how much damage this does. Might take a while for it to apply that damage, but it can theoretically do 2,000 damage, which is max durability. If it had to, it can. It would take forever, but it can. Actually, that's something I haven't tried testing this team in yet. I haven't tried doing War Warlord 4 uh, PvP, or Warlord 3 PvP, just so it would be slightly quicker while still getting a lot of loot. I still haven't tried doing that yet. I might need to go try messing with that. And I'll definitely be able to win. The problem is just getting it started. But after that, it would be pretty funny. Okay, right, let's move that. should probably just take him green there. I need to get the uh, mana rolling for this team. Ooh, a magic reduction. Now it does even half the damage. Half of infinite is still infinite though. I just need to make sure I'm casting the bottom one, I guess, a bit more. But yeah, that half magic reduction is doing almost nothing to him. At all. Didn't even notice he was half reduced. Are we still going to be doing the updated video for Delves? Oh yes, uh, we definitely will be. I do need to get around to that. That is for sure. You especially need it for non-faction and faction teams for Warrens. Uh, oh yeah, I haven't really covered much with Warrens because we've been camping it. I don't even think I've had an old video on it. But uh, Warrens is a green-yellow restriction, so you can just run Divine there. Um, the same things that we run for Yellow Tower of Doom are about the same things you can kind of run there. Uh, you, you, the main thing you'd probably want to run is uh, the standard Divine Team. You can get away with standard Divine Team if you have Rope Dart with Divinish Bala Quillen combo. 
You can run um, uh, Divinish Bala, Rope Dart, um, Quillen, and um, that one Bunny. Lunar Bunny, whatever it's called. That one green-purple bunny that converts to yellow. You're allowed to use that there, and it's probably the most viable option you have. Alternatively, if you do not have Rope Dart, you can run Mang as any hero class, Titan being the strongest, followed by uh, Divinish Bala, Quillen, and then the bunny in last slot. And that's all you're going to need to run through the entirety of um, of um, of Warrens. We're actually going to be running a very similar team in a moment for Tower of Doom, for Yellow Tower of Doom. But you can run the actual full team with no troop tradeouts in um, in Warrens because uh, everything you need for it's there. The Vinish, Bala, and Quillen can both be used, and the Bunny can still be used. Uh, we won't be able to use the Bunny right now because um, it's not yellow. But uh, Warrens allows for green, and the Bunny does count as green, obviously. So, um, yeah, you can just run that, assuming you have those components. It doesn't use any Mythic, so hopefully you have it laying around. Quillen doesn't need to be fully traded, however, Divinish Bala would. I guess technically none of it has to be fully traded, but definitely would help. Actually, Bunny is the only one that would have to be fully traded with some power. But um, ideally, Divinish Bala would be too, because at 40% mana starts the entire team except for Hero. Or Hero too, if you're using Priest. Though I don't think that team would normally use Priest. So you could if you wanted to. Uh, we'll take that for now. Get the full mana. Hopefully that gets the mana we need to get it rolling. Come on, get the last little bit of brown. Okay, we won. It's already over. Just a matter of applying the damage. Like, this is a kind of stat range where this ends up working best. Something that's not, like, excessively high, but still high enough. And where you can just infinitely loop it and just get your kill. And the only problem is when stuff revives on a team like this. Because how it applies its damage is basically like fighting all over again. No! <laughs> what did I just say? Luckily, we have Hunter's Mark, so at least it takes twice the damage if we do randomly get a skull, but still. It's like fighting the battle twice whenever they revive like that, due to how this team distributes damage. Okay, there we go. And it's kill with a skull. Yeah, Moon Rabbit was the one I was looking for. The name I was looking for. And there we go. Got a bunch of pet food. And now we can go head over to back to Tower of Doom. And we'll go mess with, um, uh, mess with this. Well, first things first. Let's figure out what floors we actually need. Actually, let me go put it in the other thing, too, just so I can copy paste it over. But anyways, let's go to, uh, Yellow Divine. Uh, Yellow Skull. That's how you spell yellow, right? Why does that look wrong? That's how you spell yellow, right? Yellow. Yeah, that's definitely right. <laughs> I normally don't have to type the word yellow, or any color for that matter. <laughs> I'm not sure why it looks so foreign to me all of a sudden. But anyways, uh, let's go get the team in. So this has to be yellow restrictions, so I can't use the rabbit. But what we can do is that... Quillen... Not sure what we'll do for a replacement. Uh, options, option, options. What do we put here? I am definitely want to do that base of a team. What's a good divine that synergizes with this? Is there even one? Let's just check yellow in general. I could always put a queen over- yeah, you know what, I'm just gonna do that. Uh, hold up, is there a... Yellow, green, blue mythic that isn't useless? Nope, <laughs> they're both useless, of course. Okay, let's go with Queen Aurora. Uh, because we're going to be missing blue now. And we don't have anything that's using blue. Okay, uh, now we just need uh, first slot. A couple different things that we could run there. We are allowed to run anything for it. I guess we could just run Divine Protector then. Uh, we can run the Yellow Doom weapon as well. Which, given that it replaces Yellow Storm, or, you know, does a new Yellow Storm, I almost want to do that with, like, Titan. Or some kind of skull-related hero class. Ideally, it's one that still has half mana start. But Priest would still kind of work. Um, yeah, let's go to Yellow Doom Weapon. We have um, Enchant, so we should be fine. Everything's going to gain its mana. Outside of Doom, it wouldn't be worth it. Outside of Potion Effects, but I believe for this, it's going to be fine. It also means we get some extra bonus. We get uh, 
12 additional armor. We also have three unique divines. Uh, oh, I guess we could make that four if we really wanted to. And go all in with, um, with a priest class. Priest is really bad with skulls. However, it does have cleanse, so we don't need to worry about freeze. It has auto cleanse on it. Oh, no. I'm actually going to go priest. Where's priest? I don't think there's anything unleveled that we could put there. Let's go priest for now. A little bit of a weird thing to do with skull spam, but I like the cleanse that it has. Plus, it gives us plus two yellow, which will help. Uh, we need to get off a yellow storm, though. So we'll just go through three extra magic then. Because we already have yellow storm off of Quillen, so we don't need a second one. Otherwise, it would be redundant. And we'll change our banner to anything with minus blue that has a lot of yellow. I think that exists. Plus two yellow, plus one something. The minus blue. Yep. Oh, it gives green, though. We don't really need green. But uh, it's better than nothing. So uh, I guess we'll do that. Okay. Take our tributes. And now we also have backup barrier. Well, actually, we only our only barrier. But uh, wait, how do we just get mail and mail again? PvP tier. Grab that. Okay, anyways, let me go and head back to Tower of Doom now. Oh, wait, oops. I need to go copy that team. Otherwise, it's not going to be there. We go to that. Click on the team. Yellow skull. Manage team. Copy, copy. Move this over here. Guild Wars, Tower of Doom. And let's get back to Tower of Doom. Okay, what floor are we on? Right, or uh, 11. Uh, what room are we on? 3 and 2. Let's go do that then. Uh, number 3 and 2. Then do the final room. And let's replace this now. Manage team. Paste team. Put that there. Boom. Okay, let's see how this does now. Should be good to go. And we'll get that weapon maxed in a few battles. I believe we needed like 8 more scrolls for it or something. Actually, I'm not sure if we're actually going to be able to reach that this stream. I like to stay at level 9. And this gets to convert purple into Doom Skulls. It also creates an additional... Oh, and Tangled. But we do have a Cleanse on an uh, extra turn. So as long as we have alignment, it's not going to matter. So like right here, we get a Cleanse. One of the benefits of using the current hero class that we're using. And then we can just uh, spam it out from here. Should be able to have alignment on something. And then we just do a triple Skull Spam and then just auto win from there. So we do that, do that. Uh, oh yeah, one of you convert out purple. Wait, who was that? Quillen. I have to be careful with that. I need to try casting my weapon before I cast Quillen. Otherwise, he denies all the purple that I need for my other thing. Which we don't want happening, ideally. Hmm. Actually, how do we work around that? I kind of need Hero to not be first slot while also be in first slot simultaneously. That's not going to work. Maybe we'll ditch the yellow weapon. It's actually conflicting a little bit. Okay, uh, I kind of want to do this on yellow, but that's probably a bad idea. Uh, I guess we could just do it on purple. And that would give us alignment for the thing. And then he's dead. Uh, is that enough damage? Yeah, that should be. Yeah, he's dead. Okay. And it kind of works. For now, we'll keep it. Uh, do, 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 what are we looking for? Room number two. And then we can move on. Oh, I almost just used fireball. That would have been a fail. Chocolate milk or strawberry milk? Both. Yeah, both is a correct answer for that. I'm not sure which one I would actually consider better. Probably strawberry milk. Oh, what do I go for here? I know this is an extra turn, is it? Yes, it is, but it's not necessarily one I want to do. But we'll do that. Uh, that should hopefully give us Divinish Bala. That should hopefully give us alignment on this. Or Quillen, either or. Just one of you have alignment, please. I think he actually did, but then I just ruined it over there, fail. Uh, well, she has it again, so we'll just keep doing that. Then we hopefully have the Doom one. And instead. As I keep forgetting, if we're up against a uh, Doom thingy, we can do that when we don't have alignment. Not for this specific one, but for the next battle, for example. There's going to be a Doom, so we get five additional Skulls onto the board, Doom Skulls. And those could, of course, have alignment on them. Okay, we'll take that for now. Get both of those two up. Uh, he just drains us a little bit. That's a thing. Uh, we could go and get our mana that we need over there. Uh, we have alignment for that. Get all the purples destroyed. And that will explode almost the entirety of the board. We can then go and throw uh, this down for a bunch of Skull Spam. Ideally, we'll have a Quill in here, and we do. <coughs> and that should give us some kind of follow-up. Like Divine Ishbala. 
We get in purple. Whenever we want it, whenever we have alignment on that, we should always be going for it. Especially on a Doom uh, fight. But yeah, works out quite nicely. I think we could run this all the way. We might have a little bit of a liability with our high skull hits later on, but we could always switch to Titan if we really had to or something similar. Uh, we don't have to use Priest with it, of course. Okay, we got a 5, then a 4, and then the final battle. Column over here. Uh, what would be another option for Queen? I'm trying to think of one. <coughs> you could play it offensively. What's that one yellow red troop convert out? It converts out green. Though the problem is you have something else that converts out green too. I was going to say the yellow red one with empower that converts green to skull. Uh, the only problem with that is um, it's going to deny you too much. So it might not be worth it. What's a good mana generating yellow that uses two colors? Could always just do that too. I'm trying to think of one. It doesn't have to be divine, obviously. Though ideally, divine would be uh, helpful for it. Forest Guardian? Um. Divine Ishbala plus Forest Guardian is an okay combo. However, you normally don't use it with Quillen. But I guess you could if you really wanted to. You generally don't use the two together. Or the three of them together. You can use the two of them together, like Divine Ishbala plus uh, uh, Forest Guardian, but using all three can conflict a bit. Oh, that actually missed. That's not good. Even all his mana, actually. That's extremely not good. And somehow we don't have alignment after that. Uh, let's see. Do we not have it on brown or anything? Wow. That is awful. Let's take a skull for now, I guess. Uh, let him get some freeze. Unfortunately, we have no way to get rid of that freeze. So we can get rid of our first slot freeze, so that's fine. Uh, actually, I can get rid of it just by taking blue. So we'll do that one over. Take the other one over. How do we still not have alignment? Um, one of you has to have it. Nope. Doesn't look like it. We're not up against a Doom either right now, so you know I'm just gonna cast this. Oh wait! Oops, we do have alignment. <laughs> I didn't even notice that there. I was just gonna cast it just for casting it, but okay, that works even better. And now he's all to win with this. Once we get that going, it should be fine. And he'll be dead off of uh, next cast or two. Actually, next cast, if we actually had alignment here, he would be dead. I don't see it though. I'll just take a poke on him, and then next ki uh, hit will kill. Okay, we'll just kill with that then, and I'll wipe him out. Wait, let me go try finding a replacement for it real quick. How oh, was the other room? Number four. Let me just double check on it. Always want to make sure it's the correct room. Uh, yes, it is number four. Okay, let me see. What's a good... Uh... What is Mana Surge? Mana Surge ends up um, giving you extra mana. Basically, when you take a 3, there's a percent chance to Mana Surge based on your hero's masteries. And uh, this only applies when you specifically take a 3. And it'll basically just double the amount of mana that you get when you end up taking it. So whatever your percent chances are says over here. And whatever that number is contributes to it in some kind of formula. Um, it starts having diminishing returns after about 50%. Which is why there's almost no difference between a 477 and a 691. It's almost the exact same thing. But, um... Uh, yeah, it just basically determines you getting double the mana when you end up taking a 3. That's the only thing it does. So, for example, if you take a 3, it'll just give you 6. Though, do you keep in mind, if you have a banner that gives you, let's say, plus 1, it'll add any additional benefits that you have after the doubling. So, for example, if you take a 3 and it mana surges, that will then, and you have a plus one on your banner, it'll give you seven mana, not eight. It doesn't double the extra uh, benefit that you have for extra mana. It will only double the base value. And uh, whenever you take a five times, it has 100% of mana surging, meaning you'll get 10 mana from it instead of five. Uh, let me see. I need to go find a replacement for the thingy now. Someone was asking about. Where is it? Guild, Tower of Doom, Fight number four. Okay, what's a yellow that you can replace Queen Aurora with? Uh, da, 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 da. I guess theoretically Astral Spirit, because it's board control. You wouldn't really be using it for much else other than board control, though. Uh, let's see. Replacements. I guess theoretically Cockatrice. It's a good entangle and mana drain option. You can't do it on the Doom, though. Uh, Dragonian Monk is a good barrier option. 
it'll barrier and help you mana generate just like a Queen of Rur will. Um, so you could just go Dragonian Monk there. Would be a decent option. What else is there? Oh, Dust Devil? I wouldn't normally say he's decent. However, in this context, it has plus one yellow and will also have empower to move the Doom to first slot. This is good because you'll be able to rush down the Doom kill immediately. So you'll have that as an option with Dust Devil. So Dust Devil might actually be good. But yeah, Dust Devil or Dragonian Monk seems to be the best replacements for it. Uh, Dust Devil if you want to quick kill the Doom. Or Dragonian Monk for the barrier. Bar that would probably be the safest bet is probably Dragonian Monk. Um, if you want to, you could feed first slot with Sentry Sentinel to feed it a bunch of attack. But once it starts taking damage, it'll uh, kind of backfire. As long as you're winning the battle, it should be fine. Uh, let's see. Goblin Rocket's good, but it doesn't work here. There's quite a few of these troops are good, but they just don't work in this context to replace it with. If you're doing a hero class with triple damage to burning enemies, you could go Infernus. But keep in mind that won't work on some battles and it also won't work on the Doom itself. But you would be able to get triple damage. Uh, Luna. For the extra explosions on yellow could be okay. Having a Luna there. You can't use Possessed King, so that would be the closest equivalent. It would be use first slot Titan and use Luna in last slot. Um, you could have Queen Isabel or Princess Elspeth, I mean, and have her kill herself immediately. And that will create you yellow that you might need, though. Unfortunately, that actually, that could create blues that you don't need. Uh, I think that's basically everything it, uh, then. Of course, Queen Aurora is what we have there. And, yeah, I don't think there's another very viable option for it. Nope. Nope. Okay. Yeah, so the only ones then. So basically, final verdict is probably Dragonian Monk, I would say. It's your cheapest thing that would work there that's viable while also keeping thematic to what Queen Aurora does. Not exactly the same, but it still barriers you. It has even better board control than Queen Aurora does. It'll do less mana accumulation, but uh, it still has the barrier and it still has mana accumulation attached to it. So it still gets the job done. It's very similar. I know it's not exactly the same. And one nice thing about Dragonian Monk is it starts with 75% mana. So unlike Queen of Aurora where we don't get to use her many times, you'll definitely be able to use Dragonian Monk. And pretty quickly too because you have enchant on it because of potions. Uh, we do have alignment, so let me go for that. That'll then give us the other cast over here. And then we just go crazy with that. Oh, he created us a purple storm. I was wondering, why is there so many purples? It's because the Vow Raven created us a purple storm. That is very convenient. That actually helps this weapon out a lot because we have alignment on it almost every single time. As I say that, we don't have alignment, do we? It's still enough damage to kill, so I'm still going for it, though. Yeah, this purple storm actually helped us win even quicker. Go figure. Ah, there we go. And those were the only two rooms, right? I believe so. Uh, yes it was. Okay, so let's keep moving forward. And we are going to keep going until we run out of every sigil. We're just going to keep going the entire time. Mainly because I want to get enough scrolls to ideally upgrade this weapon before we do the video. That'd be kind of perfect. Uh, it'd be pr fine if we don't have it before the video. It's not going to make too huge a difference to the weapon, but it's definitely an aspect of it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we need another five Doom kills. And this is one of them. So after this, we only need four more. So we should be able to do that. I don't know. It depends how Val Ravens run. We currently have nine sigils. So we'd have to two room every single floor. And I'm not sure we could two room all four of the floors. Or how lucky Val Ravens will be. Or how many extra floors we do have. Maybe I will need to go take some Hay Scrolls. Because I need to make sure I get uh, a little bit more Val Raven to reach that. If we want to get it right now. Okay, do we have alignment on this? Yes. So we'll go for it. And I should get the team rolling. And he's already dead. Or we already got the loop going, so he should be dead soon. Uh, we'll throw this on yellow. I almost want to throw it on purple, but yellow has the highest chance of extra turning here. Grab that. Uh, alignment. Do we have it? No. Yes. Possibly. No. Still no. Probably still no. Uh, let's see. No, he's got it. Okay. And that should be matched now with how many skulls are on the board. Uh, 
And what else can cast right now? Just do that and then he's dead. There we go. Yeah, we could put Raph in first slot to go crazy with Skull Spam. Uh, we end up losing protection against Entangle, though, if we do that. We won't have a mean to Entangle and we won't have a mean to Freeze. Uh, because the well, reason we're actually using Priest in first slot right now is for the cleanse that it has on itself. Every time we take an extra turn, it cleanses. Oh yeah, we might not be able to reach it right now, never mind. Unless we get really lucky with Val Ravens. I have to take both those two side battles. And I have to take that side battle. However, we do have two haste in the time, so maybe we'll get a Val Raven, an extra Val Raven on one of the two. Anyways, we gotta go do three, five, and two, and then the final room. So that's gonna use five, four sigils right there. Uh, the mana surge is based on percent chance, like I showed on that one screen. Right there, it's 100% it's chance whenever we take a 5. There's a 0% chance when you take it on a 4. And, um, what was the other one? And the percent chance when you take a 3 is based on that one number I showed earlier. Oh, what do we take here? We'll go grab... We have alignment there, so we'll go for that. Get a big hit in, get a nice AoE, and then just kill it with the Vinish Bala. That should be matched, and if it's not, we just do that. One HP, really. Extreme overkill. And it was still our turn. There's our lucky scroll. It was all of them except four, right? Uh, easier just to remember that. Yeah, it's all but four. Let's just do every room that isn't four. But yeah, if you wanted to, you could do that as a replacement. Have a Raph in first slot instead of the thing back there. You're getting rid of cleanse, though. And protection against a few mechanics. With cleanse, we don't have to worry about um, Bone Dragon. We also don't have to worry about um, any freeze team. And we don't have to worry about anything that might have Entangle. That's one of the main reasons why we're running what we're running. Priest with uh, this setup. Also, I love how that AoE can just clip one of them out so we don't need to worry about it. Uh, let's see. We don't have anything good to do here, do we? I don't believe so. Doesn't look like it. So we're going to go just try clearing the board out then. Okay, now we should have something to be able to do here. Uh, or not. Um, nope, not really. We'll take that. See if that helps anything some. Not really. I'm just going to go for this. It's fine. Oh, never mind. We actually get an extra turn out of that. Nice. Okay. Uh, is either of you enough to kill? No. I'm still just going to do this. And then kill it with the other thing. And I'll just take it out with skulls. Hello, Stefan. Welcome. Okay. And then we can just take battle number five. Just double check that that is the battle we need. Just so we don't accidentally do a wrong room. Yes, this is. That is for power. So we grab that. And then we take the uh, Doom Room. And then move on. Yeah, Divinish Bala with Quillen, Quillen is excessively, excessively strong. It's really funny. How decent that combo is. It's one of the better combos in the game. I don't personally use it too, too much. But it's really good for yellow restriction. I personally don't like it in Guild Wars, though. Because if you lose one of them, you're almost going to lose the entire battle. I generally like using Guild War teams that have some kind of comeback capability. And this team is kind of an all-in battle kind of team. It assumes that you're just going to win every single time. But when you start falling behind... Also, if you're wondering why we're using this, it's because of... Um, you notice we didn't lose a turn. Uh, we constantly keep cleansing. So um, we will not lose our turn on when we hit a Bone Dragon. That's almost the entire reason why we're using this. Because a Bone Dragon and a Tangle, a Bone Dragon is a really big reason. And uh, the reason for it is we don't lose our turn when we Skull Spam against them. This is one of the only few hero classes that can do that. Only hero classes with Immune to Freeze or uh, any of them that have Cleanse on extra turn can do that. Uh, what do we take here? And of course that also helps with Entangle, not just Freeze. It works with any status effect. 
Okay, we have a problem here. We did not have a good starting board. And that might actually die. I'm actually going to do something a little bit weird just to get this team rolling. And let's do that. Okay, good. We did get lucky enough for an extra turn. Uh, please tell me we have alignment here. We definitely need it. Okay, we do. We won. Let's match. Should be match. We just do that. Uh, do we have any alignments? No. I have a divinish ball. Yeah, we do. There we go. Grab that. Uh, take the skull over. Take the purple thingy. Okay, now we have purple storm, which actually help us keep casting this over and over again. He's helping us out a lot right now, actually. And uh, hopefully we have some kind of alignment. I guess we'll go for that for now. That will give us the reds we need to kill him. And now he's dead. There we go. What troop to use if we don't have Queen Aurora? You can use Dragonian Monk in last slot. You can use... Um, uh, you can use... Um, oh, I forgot his name. You can use Dust Devil in last slot. You can also use Raph in first slot. One of those few options would work out best. Probably Dragonian Monk, I would say, overall. But Raph in first slot would work, too. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, 14. Since we're trying for this now, I guess I will take both rooms. So I will take the 4 and the 2. 4 is just going to be a useless haste, but if it gives us a Val Raven or brings us closer to a Val Raven, it'll be helpful. Nope, no Val Raven. But at least it uh, keeps our battle that we currently have. It preserves it and possibly brings us closer to getting a Val Raven. Right now we have nothing, so let's take a red for now. Hopefully we'll have some kind of alignment here. No. Let's take that. Okay, now we have Divine Ishbala, and that should be matched, so we'll get that down. Uh, should have one of them on alignment, and we do. It does get rid of our other alignment, but it does allow Divine Ishbala to go now do her thing. Uh, let's move that over for now. That gives us the extra turn at the top there, just so we can go AoE and then poke it. Uh, what other moves do we have? We'll take the yellow down there. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, Quillen, can you do anything? Not really. Let's take that for now. Doom, we still can't do. The Browns, we have alignment on, so we'll go for that. That should give us Divine Ishbala as well, hopefully, somewhere. Uh, I think I still cast it regardless. And then just Doom kill him. Okay, that works. Uh, and then just hit him with that. And one more cast will pretty much do it. Take that down there. And Divine Ishbala to anything will kill. And that counts as anything. That AoE would have killed it regardless at that point. Yep, hey scroll. So that preserves the one point that we just used. Uh, let's see, in room number two and then move on. Does the new update help for Forge Scrolls outside of Tower of Doom? I can't say. But no, it doesn't. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can actually say or not. But uh, from what I recall, there wasn't anything for it. <clears throat> they did make mention of it a while back in one of their Q&As, but they haven't implemented anything related to it yet. And next patch is also likely to not implement anything with it, though they might, you never know. Uh, what do we take here? Do we have anything to take here? Uh, I would think we would. Doesn't look like it, though. Gonna go for a Queen Aurora, I guess. Try getting that to land. Just to preserve our turn and to give them barrier and everything. Okay, now we have alignment, so let's go with that. Use Divine Ishbala. Hopefully I have enough purples to go use this. Uh, nope. But now. Still no, but I'm still doing it for the poke. And then we just use the other two to kill them out with, and that should be match. There we go. Ends up working out nicely. Is there a low-medium build for this event? Uh, Mang. Mang is always the answer if you're looking for a low build. Build Mang into every single support option you have. I would assume it'd be something like Mang, Dragonian Monk, or actually Mang, Cockatrice, actually, probably. Or even just use both. Mang, Cockatrice, Dragonian Monk, and then, like, one other troop. And roll it like that. And just build your entire team around um, Mang focus. And set it to Titan as your hero class with barrier on every brown. If you're ever in doubt of a low level team to build, 
Just set your hero class to Titan and put a Mang. <laughs> and if that's allowed to be used in the game mode, you can probably win with it. Mang can win. Mang Titan can win almost any battle in the entire game. It's pretty slow for quite a few things, but uh, it can win almost any battle. Just that combination. I used it a lot on my Nintendo Switch account. You personally don't see me using it excessively, just because it is generally not the quickest option for things. But if you have no option, it's definitely a great option to have. Uh, what on earth do we move here? None of it looks good. I'm actually going to give him a skull, because I believe it gives us alignment for next turn. Does it? Yeah, because we can just move that and then use Divine Follow to get things rolling. Okay, uh, we should be good to go now, so we'll cast that. Gotta be careful with that 25% reflect. Should be fine though. That shouldn't kill us. Like an anti skull measure, but he's durable enough that it shouldn't really die to it. Uh, there is sometimes an occasional glitch where that can do infinite damage though. Not sure exactly what causes it, but it is possible to inf take infinite damage to a 25% skull reflect. Have to be careful using skull spam against it. Because that is a thing that happens occasionally. Not sure what triggers though. Unless they fixed it. I'm not sure if they patched it out. I have a feeling it hasn't been patched yet. But it might have been. I haven't actually like specifically tested. Oh, I'll take that for now. I would hope it's patched out. I know when uh, several months ago when uh, Primal Rift was first released it wasn't patched yet. Because I remember dying to those 25% score reflex many times. Because we were using Mang Skull Spam against it at the time. Just because it worked for it. There wasn't any other real good options for it. Uh, any good team to counter Web Spinner and PvP, just entangle it. You can't do anything if it's entangled. Or at least a lot less effective. Most of its team is based around Skull Spam, just so just a single entangle can normally just hinder it almost useless. Ah, uh, what do we do with this board? I'm actually going to move that for now. Let him have everything else. And then we should be able to get rolling here. Do we have alignment? Yes. So we'll cast that. That should be able to give us Divine Ishpala. And that should be able to give us this. There's so many blues on the board. I wish we could do something with them. Nothing on this team utilizes blue. I almost want to make Queen Aurora into something that uses blue. Too bad there's no blue-yellow that does Skull Spam properly. That'd be very useful if there was. There is a blue-yellow that has a double convert, but its second convert is based on being someone on your team being death marked. And while the Doom will occasionally do that, it's very situational. That we'd actually be death marked with it. Because normally we want to win before it even starts getting them down. So I guess that it could theoretically work as well. You could put Bastite Priestess in last slot here. And just deliberately let the Doom 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 you. You'd have to go out of your way to let it Doom you though. But it would allow it on those final battles to have a Skull Spam. It's one of those troops that almost never gets used because it's, the fact that it requires a death mark on your own team is really annoying. Because generally you wouldn't want to like deliberately death mark anything on your team. Because that's a really scary mechanic to have since you could just randomly die. And normally you'd want to cleanse it off even if it does get inflicted with it. But she does have a double convert when you are death marked. For only 13 mana cost. She's the cheapest double convert in the game. But the only problem is um, it has such a annoying requirement. Because you almost never want to be Doom Skulled. I mean, you almost never want to be uh, uh, have a Doom on your team. Or, you know, a, the, the Doom effect on your... Why well, do I keep calling it Doom? The Death Mark effect on your team. Uh, what do we take here? Do we have alignment? Probably not. Uh, I'm just going to take that skull for now. Then we should hopefully have uh, Divine Spala, and that should get us rolling. Uh, I'll take the skull for now. Do we have any alignment off of that? No. Uh, let's see. We'll throw it into yellows. That kind of missed. We'll take ourselves a... Uh, let's see. Hmm. We don't have alignment on any of that, do we? How? <laughs> let's see. I don't know if it looks like a free turn. I'm just going to gamble with this, I guess. Nope, the five extra dooms did not hit it. Actually, we almost lost our first slot for the first time. Stop reviving. Uh, let's see, we'll use that for Divine. Get all that converted. 
Take that down for the extra turn. Uh, do we have any alignment on that? Probably not. Uh, no, so we'll take that for now. Now we have alignment, and we can just do that. Do some kind of follow-up onto it. Like the browns. And what else do we need here? We'll get that for now. Well, then you should be able to do something, so we'll do that. And it was kill it with that thing. And that's enough damage to kill, and there we go. That works. Okay, next floor. Floor 16. What do we have? Uh, floor 16 is a fireball and then move on. Also, we only have scouted up to 17. Oh no, I'm gonna run out of sigils. No wonder why we were only scouted up that far. Because he probably bought up to like tier 6 or 5 or something. Uh, okay. Did anyone scout further than that? No. We don't have anyone scouted further. Okay, oh, uh, where's the thing? So we're just doing 5 and 4 then? Grab five, grab four. We are almost out of sigils. Run out of sigil on next floor. Which means we won't be able to get that weapon fully maxed until tomorrow, but that's not too big a deal. It only gains one additional damage, and I believe it gains three mana back per yellow on the opposing team or something? From the other effects? No. It drains three mana from, or two mana from all yellow, I believe it is. Something like that. Okay, that gets us full man on everything. And we already got the spam going, so we'll do that for the other one. Uh, do we have alignment? Yes. So we'll throw that in there. Double check the rest. Uh, no, there's no doom. We just go skull spam, I guess. I just hate that that's a nice purple. Just for fun, I almost want to put Bastite Priestess there. I forget what its other convert is. If it's one single convert is good, I might actually keep, uh, put it in there. I just feel like we need something that uses blue. Because we're getting such an excess of blue on this team. That we're using nothing with. The Queen Aurora is helping us get our mana quicker. So that we can actually quick start like we have been. Did that just to clear the board out, so we get the somewhat new one. This might backfire, but we'll go for this. I'll get good at it in backfire. We get hit right into an extra turn. Uh, let's see, we got our uh, thing to kill it with that. We can then go and just Doom Skull him again. He just hits on barrier, so it won't really matter. And what do we have from here? No direct option, so let's go for that for now. That gives us Doom Blade. Uh, we do not have any alignment for it though, currently. And now we have even less alignment to give Quillen though. But I get yeah, having to do Quillen. It's because it denies our alignment on the purple Doom weapon. However, it gives us alignment for our Divinish Bala when we do that. Okay, then we take four and then we move on. Hopefully we'll still be able to get two more Vow Ravens here. But well, it looks like at this rate we're only going to get one more Val Raven this stream. Meaning we'll have to finish out the Doom Weapon tomorrow and then we'll need to finish out the Delves the following day. It looks like. Well, obviously we weren't going to finish it all today. But uh, I was expecting to hopefully get the weapon done today, but apparently not. We're going to be ever so slightly short and it's not worth spending like 300 something gems just to get the uh, upgrade now when we can just wait till tomorrow. Especially since we're about to burn through a couple thousand gems pretty soon. Next week I'm going to burn through like 5,000 gems. It is going to be so many gems going down. But there's several things we need to do within the next week starting next Friday. We're starting this Friday, my bad. Because we have the hero class coming this Friday. Oh yeah, by the way, a new hero class this Friday. This is a pretty decent one too. Decent weapon and a decent hero class. Though the weapon's better than the hero class. But the hero class is still useful. Has a lot of blue accumulation. Has plus three blue. It's basically like a Queen Aurora, but for a single color, kind of. Because Queen Aurora is overall six mana, but it's one for each. But uh, this new hero class is going to be plus three all into the same exact color. Which is extremely high. Oh yeah, we have Quillen. I can just do that and he's dead. There we go. 
What room should you post for your guild to get? Uh, the main important ones are power scrolls because they give you a lot of stats. It's the only stat related room you should take. Um, so power scrolls, heroism scrolls because they allow you to skip an entire floor. Uh, you use them later on. Fireball scrolls because they do the exact same thing except for single rooms. They allow you to skip an entire room without having to do the battle. And these you save for later on as well. Um, so yeah, haste, uh, haste as well. Haste ends up giving you one sigil. This might seem redundant, however, it gives you a Valraven chance. These you can normally skip, however, you do generally want to report them to your guild for people that are low on sigils who want to conserve on them. And um, Lucky Scrolls, which ends up counting as two Doom Kills, which helps a lot for leaderboard. Uh, let's see, 16, right? So we took the five, we took the four, and then we take the final room. And hopefully we get a Val Raven here in the next battle. Nope, no Val Raven. Hopefully we get the next battle or else that's the end of the line for today. Uh what did it take here? Let's take that for now. Get all of our mana going for our main converters. He denies a mana, but that does almost nothing. And one of these has to have convert. Yeah, we'll just go for that first. Try to do it in this order so we can get skull alignment. Doesn't look like I'll be able to though. So I'm just going to go for another one of these. Just clear the board some. Uh, I'm probably just going to have to go for Quillen. We somehow do not have Quillen alignment right now, though. There we go. Now we have it. So we'll do that. That'll give us Divinish Bala. Though it'll make it so we can't use that weapon now that we just denied all the purple. We are in a Doom battle, though. So we could try doing it that way. Uh, let me do this on... I almost feel like doing this on blue. There's so many blues on the board. It actually reduced the number by doing that. Just because they would be so clumped together. Uh, let's see... Yeah, no good option. I could risk it, though I think I'm just going to go do this again for some extra HP and to clear the board again. Uh, someone has to be able to do something. Come on. I guess we'll go to Vinish Bala for now just to set up the board. Oh, wow. Lucky extra turn right there. Uh, okay, so hopefully we'll have an option after we move that. Nope, still none. Oh, yes, we do. Never mind. Got the Doom. There we go. And then we have another Divine. And then, uh, oh yeah, I should do Quillen first if we can. I don't think we had Quillen alignment there. You generally want to do Quillen into Divine. But we could do that into Doom, I guess. We either want to use uh, Divinish Bala into Doom Weapon, or Quillen into Divinish Bala, or the mean two combos we want to be using. So this into Doom Weapon is the most ideal. I guess we'll try it. We don't have direct alignment, but we have Skull Creation, so it looks like it does land. Uh, let's see. Do we have cool in here? Not for free. Yes, we do. Free turn right there. And then we do cool in into Divinish Bala. I'm not even going to check on alignment. That almost guarantee has alignment. <laughs> and it did. There we go. Okay, final floor. And by final floor, I mean final room because, uh, unless we get a uh, Val Raven. You know what? I'm actually going to take a Haste Scroll right here first because uh, we could use that to guarantee that we can still keep going for now it's also likely going it because the is if the Val Raven isn't on this battle which actually is so nice uh it would have been on our next battle so we did the haste there just to make sure we wouldn't end yet okay so we still have two more battles then so we can finish out this floor it looks like and then i'll do my other dailies real quick and then finish up the stream but if anyone still has any other questions or anything let me know i oh, want a good replacement for queen aurora for this build you can either use uh, Dragonian Monk, or you can use Cockatrice, or you can use um, First Slot Wrath. Any of those options would work. Okay, he creates a Purple Storm, which will actually help us. So we'll do this, hopefully get that up again, and with his Purple Storm, we should just be able to keep casting this weapon. Just keep alternating between the two, ideally. Uh, yeah, we'll take that down for now. Hmm. We don't have any alignments, do we? Actually, yes, we do. We have that one. We'll do that. That sets up Divinish Bala. And hopefully that sets up our weapon. And it does. And he's dead. There we go. And it was still our turn as well, even if that didn't kill. And uh, now we're back up to three sigils. There we go. Uh, what room are we doing now? Now we go do three, two, and then the final room. Which is probably our last three battles because I don't think we're going to get another Val Raven. So who knows, maybe we'll get lucky.
Let's see, how many scrolls short are we? I might just use some fireballs preemptively. Normally you wait till later on, however, if we can actually get it right now, I might. Oh, never mind, we have to scout out the next floor, don't we? Never mind, is the next floor not pre-scouted? Because this might have been the last one that we currently have scouted out, and I definitely don't have enough sigils to scout. You need at least five sigils to do that, because you need to do every single room. Well, five sigils, assuming you don't get Val Raven or, uh, or a uh, haste room. It's technically a little bit less than five between those two factors. But with how many we currently have, it'll not be enough to scout the floor. Uh, let's see, we'll throw that down. We'll grab a skull down right there. Take that and hopefully get it right into weapon. Oh, if those purples weren't connected, it would have. Uh, I'm going to move that over, I guess. No, it's not going to give us anything. Let's go to Divinish Bala and try again. Now we have alignment. This team really makes you think and look at the board. It's starting to hurt my brain, though. <laughs> Too much thinking compared to a normal team. Uh, the team just doesn't run itself like some other teams do. You have to constantly look at like five different alignments all at once, simultaneously every single time the board changes. Uh, yeah, that's not... Ah, oh, gee, I'll still go for it. And then we just do that into weapon. Or not even any follow-up. There we go. Okay, uh, I think two was the final room we needed here, right? Yep, and that's the last room we have scouted, so we actually have to end here after we do these last two rooms, because I cannot scout a floor with only, like, one sigil, <laughs> or however many we'll have. Even if we get, like, a Val Raven there, we're only gonna have, like, two sigils, which is not enough to scout a floor. Especially after just getting a Val Raven drop, because that means we won't get one from within the next floor, most likely. Uh, do we have alignment? No, so move that for now. How about now? Uh, yeah, we kind of do. We could go for that and then um, throw that into Divinish Follow. And then throw that hopefully into Doom Weapon. Yes, perfect. So we'll do that. Let's get our board clear. Uh, let's see. Can either of you do a thing? Well, for now, let's move that over. Perfect skull there. Didn't get it. Hmm. Oh, we can take that as well. Oops, wrong way. Does that give us an option? Yes. Divine Spala right up top. Perfect. Uh, Quillen. No. Yes. The knives are purple, but there's barely any on the board currently, so that doesn't matter as much. And he should be dead. Oh, unless that happens. That is somewhat unfortunate. Because we don't have a follow-up kill for it, do we? Yes, we do. Doom up and in and he's dead. To follow up. Or never mind, that's enough to kill him on stone. Because we got two skulls at once. And of course it does the AoE damage. And our final battle for now. Even if we somehow get Val Raven here. Uh, we do not have next floor scouted. Oh, we did get Val Raven here. But we don't have next floor scouted, so I can't. Unless we want to scout out a floor, I guess. Uh, move that over. It's been a while since we bothered scouting out a floor. I'd have to waste two fireball scrolls, or even three fireball scrolls, though. If we have three fireball scrolls, I guess we will. Because then we could do three fireballs and then two rooms. That's a bit of a waste, but um, it would scout out the floor. Uh, let's see. What do we go for here? There's no way none of you have alignment here. I'm just going to risk it. Okay, we take a lot of damage there, but we didn't die, so it's fine. I mean, if we lose hero, it's not the end of the world with this team. So it would be slightly annoying, but wouldn't be, like, the end of it at all. Alright, I'm just gonna have to take a normal skull. So we'll do that. He'll poke us back, which is fine for now. Hey, doesn't he create purple storm on his own death? That would be really useful if he does. For us. Wow, this board is bad. Um, Do I just go for it? Actually, I think I go for protection. Let me do that. And hopefully that gives us something. Yes, it does. I have to deny my purple, but it's fine because he creates a purple storm for us. And now after I cast this Divinish Bala, enough purple should fall that we could just go and get a convert. Uh, or not. Oh, uh, yes, we can. There we go. 
Okay. Uh, then we just Divine Ishpala. Hopefully get the weapon again because Purple Storm. Or not. Uh... Yeah, none of those are an option currently. I guess we go and risk it right here. We're going to lose like two troops if this misses though. Okay, good. It didn't miss. <laughs> We'd be so dead if it did, because he would be able to get, like, four skulls in a row. Okay, do I go for it again? Again, we don't really have an option. Actually, yes, we do. We can go uh, that into uh, Divine, and then he's dead. There we go. Okay, we'll go scout out a floor for once. It's going to waste every fireball we have, though. Oh, wait, I only have two fireballs. I can't. It would assume... Well, I guess I can. Yes, I can. That just means I can't do the final battle. But we'll fireball two of them. We'll fireball the two hardest ones. So we'll fireball the tier five and tier four. Uh, this will waste all of our fireballs, though. But we'll go scout it real quick. Uh, life scroll with no need to report on that. Uh, wait, we this one is the one that we don't have scouted, right? Yeah, this one we don't have scouted yet still. Unless they mention it on the Discord and not here, but it will. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's, I believe, as far as we have currently anyone doing it. Let's go fireball this one. There's the unlock. So, uh, oh yeah, what tier is this one for? So we know that four is the unlock. Let's go write it up real quick. Uh, and then we'll go check the other two. 18-4. Oh, we don't know if anything else is going to be there. Well, let's go do these other two with our two sigils that we have. And hopefully we'll get a Vow Raven or Haste off of one of these. And just do it that way. And we'll still use the same team. Salty is live. Well, we'll be done in a couple minutes. I just wanted to scout out this floor real quick for my guild. And I'll just do the dailies off stream. We don't have anything too interesting to do with that, though. So tomorrow we'll have uh, delves to go and do. The entirety of the uh, delve event, of course. And we have a new delve, not this Friday, but the following Friday. So definitely make sure to stock up on um, on um, on uh, chaos shards before then. Definitely going to be useful for that. Yeah, it shouldn't take too long. These battles are weaker since we took the two weakest ones for last. Since we used the uh, instant win on the other two. Okay, I don't have a drop for that. Uh, do we not have Doom Weapon alignment? I was going to say, we should with that many purples in that area. Okay, uh, do either of you do anything currently? No. So we'll go for... Actually, I'll move that for now. And then we have our purple Doom Weapon thing again. Uh, and then that gives us the combo again, hopefully with purple somewheres, no. So ideally here we just go for the skull spam then, right into Divinish Bala, and he's already dead. Is this anything relevant to report back on? No, life scroll. Okay, let's hope that this one has something good. And... What do we need here? Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, let me take the blue first. Actually, let me take the brown first. And then we'll take blue to red, just clear the board a bit more. Oh, green as well on the Cascade. Nice. Uh, Vow Raven better not escape. But it does mean we can go take the final room now, too, since we just got that Vow Raven, so that's nice. Divinish Bala, can you do anything? Yes. So we'll do that. Hopefully that'll be purple alignment. Should be with that many on the board. And we'll get our Vow Raven kill. That then gives us purple storm that we can keep doing to chaining into more of them. Unfortunately, we don't have alignment right now, so we'll just wait and use that for a good Divinish Bala for now. And now we can use it for that. And it should pretty much be matched. It is so useful when he gives us a purple storm. I almost feel like using a hero class that has purple storm. It is so ridiculously useful. Uh, the only problem is Quillen is lower down. So even if I use a hero class that has it, it wouldn't matter. I would have to have a troop that uses it on death. Which I don't think we could fit anything in the team that would have that in last slot. I don't know. Is there any yellow troop that has purple storm on death? I don't believe that's a thing. Or when a enemy dies, I should say. If that's a thing, then that would be actually really good in last slot on this team. Even more so than Queen Aurora, possibly. I don't think that's a thing, though. At least not under that color, anyways. Uh, speaking of not under that color, we have, like, no alignment here. I'm just going to do that just to set up the board for next turn. Oh, good, we did extra turn. And now he's dead. Oh, it's not dead. And now you're dead. Oh, not... Th Can you stop agiling? Now you're... D no! Four Agiles, what is that? A 
attack scroll, and none of them are useful. Okay. Uh, 18-4. All scouted. There we go. I don't want to write up the whole thing right now. That would take too long. <laughs> I'm just saying what the next one is. Okay. But yeah, we got one room scouted. It's been a while since we bothered scouting, but that's basically what you do. You just do every single room instead of just one of them, and then you report back the useful ones to your guild. Uh, I'll take that one over. Grab, um... None of it's good. And I don't want to risk doing the Doom Weapon this early. This is way too early to just throw it down. Uh, let's see, I might have to throw one of them down, though, just for the sake of doing it. That or use Queen Aurora for now, I guess. Let me actually do it on purple. Because I'll either go as Quillen alignment or the Doom uh, weapon alignment. And I gave him Sunbird, which actually helps us because it makes him weaker. <laughs> it manages to make him weaker, oddly enough. So we'll do this into Divinish Bala, it looks like. And we'll win with that combo then instead. That's perfectly fine. Doesn't matter which combo we win with, win with as long as one of them win. Uh, I'll take that down. Uh, oh yeah, we do have the Doom Skull one. Good, and we get to extra five Doom Skulls because we're up against a Doom. That then gives us Divinish Bala, which hopefully goes feeds right back into the weapon. Good, it does. That's going to die off of AoE, which I actually do want to cast that one more time just so it does indeed die off of AoE. And just kill it that way. So we'll do that. Uh, even if we don't have alignment here, I do want to do it just to kill both of them right now. Uh, do I have a drop for that? Yes. Ideally, we do have alignment. It doesn't look like we do. Let's gamble with it. I need the double kill, so we're going for it regardless. And we did get alignment, and it was still our turn. And he dies to all the skulls simultaneously. And there we go. Now, is that enough Doom kills to get the weapon upgraded? Why do I feel like it's not? That's as far as we can go. There's no way we can only... There's no way we could scout an entire floor with one sigil and no scrolls. So that's the end of the road for now, at least for today, for the uh, Tower of Doom. But uh, next thing I wanted to check is, can we upgrade this weapon? To max. That is the question. Uh, weapon. Doom. Yes, we can. Is it exact? Oh no, we actually got two further than we needed to. But there we go. We have maxed out uh, Doom weapon now. Sweet. So there we go. And now we just keep going because uh, we still need more of those scrolls. But uh, there we go. Doomed axe uh, plus 10. And from plus 10, it drains two mana from all yellow enemies, create a light storm, five scatter damage. Uh, which is actually pointless because the AoE takes place before the scatter damage. So even if you're trying to use it to get rid of barrier, it won't. So that's kind of useless. Uh, burns the first enemy and reduces the enemy's attack by two. Uh, or the first enemy's attack by two. So a lot of that not too useful. The most useful aspect of it is the um, burn first enemy. In case you were using a hero class that does triple on burning. Uh, light storm and the uh, drain two mana from yellows. Those are the only three particularly useful ones that it has. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it also gains one whole additional damage to all enemies per level. So I guess that alone is kind of worth it, too. Because getting all the way to plus 10 is plus 10 additional damage. So it's actually doing 35 damage rather than 25. Plus whatever other bonuses we get from other extra magic and stuff. But anyways, guys. Is she talking about me? What's she mentioning about me? What is she saying? I'm gonna need to catch up back up on her stream. But anyways, guys. We'll be back tomorrow night here on the channel. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, here on uh, Test of the Terror channel. Uh, we'll be back in uh, two hours prior to now tomorrow, as we are every single time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be uh, mainly doing some more Tower of Doom and doing all of the faction uh, events for uh, tomorrow, which is the uh, Stone Song faction. Uh, that one with all the, um, the what are they called? The, um, wow, I forgot their name. Harpies. The one with all the harpies in it. But um, yeah, we'll be back soon. The event video will be up uh, hopefully pretty soon as well. I'll try getting it up as soon as possible, but between YouTube load times and everything, uh, hopefully it doesn't take too, too long. But it's going to be at least a couple hours, so I guess for most people, that'll be in the morning for you guys at that point. But uh, we'll have that up soon and go from there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciated. Leave a like if you enjoyed the stream, and we will be back very soon. Goodbye, everyone, and have a wonderful week. See you later.